be dismissed to their class. And we'll have Pastor Bob for the sermon today. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, children. God bless. I love the, chi- the kids. I love the children. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you today. Glad you all could make it. Those of you who are online as well. And it says, pray with me. Father in heaven, we come to you today to say how grateful we are for the truth that you have passed our way and, and the availability that we have to explore and absorb your truth. Lord, how thankful we are for the price that you paid for us to have a relationship with you. Help us to be people with strong desires to know you better, to follow you closer. Grant us strength to be more than hearers of your word. Lord, give us wisdom to be doers of your word. And we pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. (laughs) He missed his dad for so long. Glad to have you back, Emmanuel. <laughs> and so is your family, as we can tell. Yeah. Well, here we are in the thick of another holiday season, and it seems like the uh, retail stores have started out even earlier than before. I remember back in September, I'm sure it was September, but it could have been August that... Um, in, uh, in Costco, I saw that they already had trees for sale. They were all, it's, it was all, it was a big thing already. And it is th- coming up Thanksgiving on Thursday, and, um, and it's a fitting time uh, to be thankful for the things. And um, when Pastor Michelle spoke a couple weeks ago, she asked, she asked us all, you know, what are the things you're grateful for? And um, I didn't really say anything, but uh, I thought, I thought, and I should have said something at the time, but um, I'm going to make sure that I say it today. And and I wanted to make sure that the kids came up, is that I'm thankful for those kids. I am thankful for those children. We can learn so much from them. I I, I just love them. I just love them. And I I love that they're here on a Sunday morning and uh, I just can't say enough about, you know, the kids. Most of the time this season, we, um, we're thankful. We find ourselves being thankful. And, and most of the stuff that, um, that we find ourselves thankful for are the positive things. Things like... Um, Thankful for groceries, groceries in the cupboard, gas in the tank, folding money, family, our relationship with God. But there are things that we, we can be thankful for uh, that we don't have as well. When I look back at some of the things that I prayed for in my early recovery, um, I am so thankful that the Lord said no. And, and many times um, he said it with a chuckle. Um, and, and being thankful for, for some of the things that we don't have can be really helpful for us to be thankful for the things that we do have. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.20, it says, And give thanks for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I am thankful for the last 18 years that the medical field has found no cancer in me. I remember a time not too long ago, I was having a problem with AFib. I don't know how many of you know that I've got it. And um, it got to a point where I needed to go to the ER. And while I was there, they wanted a blood draw, they always do. And I was dehydrated. And dehydration causes veins to be very hard to find. And after having tried and failed several times in each arm, I started to sweat. And then I started getting dizzy. And then I started getting lightheaded, and then I started getting nauseous, nauseous, nausea. 
And then uh, I told the nurse, you better back up because I'm about to throw up. And that was the, um, the worst blood draw that I've ever had. And um, looking back on it, I can be thankful for it. I can be grateful for that blood draw because not during the time, not when it was happening, I wasn't that thankful at all. I was just let me get this over with. But um, during that time, I learned something about having blood drawn from me. And that if I stay nice and hydrated, um, the veins are going to be easy to find. Now when I go in and have a... Uh, have blood taken from me, I make sure that I, I drink lots of water. Um, and it's every time I go in now, it's like one prick, I'm out of there, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm smiling, I'm happy, I'm grateful that I, that I was able to, to be able to get it done so quickly. And, and I wouldn't have been able to get it done so quickly had I not learned a valuable lesson on that worst draw, blood draw ever. So it's possible that we, you know, can be grateful and thankful for, the, um, for even the hard things. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Be thankful in all circumstances. And this verse was a passage that was about Paul's final advice to the Thessalonians and there are many pieces in that passage besides being thankful for, for that, that line up with God's will. But one of the pieces is about being thankful in all circumstances. And I'm not always the best at being thankful during all circumstances. I'm glad that I didn't find a verse in the Bible that said, be grateful during all circumstances. So I probably wouldn't be talking much about it right now. Hard times take me a little while. Um, I have to reflect on them, process what happened and the reality of it before I can find what to be thankful for in it. It says, being grateful is something that must be learned. Gratitude is a learned behavior. When we were children, our parents would give us something, a toy, a kiss, a hug, something nice, some ice cream, and we'd be smiling, happy, you know, and then our parents would say, now what do you say? What do you say? You remember? We were taught. We were taught to be grateful. I don't think anybody ever taught me how to be grateful during those hard times. I don't remember ever a time where I walked into the house with a a new knot on my head or a bloody lip or bloody nose or something, and Dad said, Son, what do you say? <laughs> no. What do you say, son? No. Those were times where we just needed to be comforted. And, and that hopefully that's what we got. But it, it's possible that we can process that information and look back on it and be thankful because we are to be thankful for everything, as it said in Ephesians 5.20. And in 1 Thessalonians, it said, be thankful in all circumstances. And in Colossians 3.15, it says, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. So I recently lost a friend who passed away suddenly, Rick Cohn, many of you knew him. His passing wasn't something that we were expecting, so it was a shock to hear the news that he had passed away. And when I first heard that news about Rick, there was no way that I could be grateful that my dear friend had passed. We worked together for years sharing the good news about Jesus. Every Wednesday he would come to our weekly Bible study. Wednesdays don't seem the same without Rick there. Once a month, he would take over and lead the study. In the first couple of 
days after he passed, I thought about him a lot. And as I started to process the information, I began to realize how dumb it was for me to not be grateful that Rick had passed. And then, even when I say it out loud right now, it sounds a little weird that I'm grateful that Rick has passed. Rick was born with a severe case of cerebral palsy, and he wasn't able to communicate without the use of a a speaking device. He wasn't able to control his arms or his legs. They had to be tied to the chair so he wouldn't be flailing around. He was confined to that wheelchair. He had to depend on a caretaker, 724. Rick was the most severely handicapped person that I'd ever known. But Rick spoke of his condition as a momentary light affliction. I looked at Rick as the most severely handicapped person I'd ever known, and he thought of his handicap as a momentary light affliction. I'm so grateful to have known him. Because of his faith in Jesus, my friend looked forward to the day that he would be called home to eternal life with the Lord. He made it clear with his DNR that he did not want to be resuscitated in the case of his death. Now in hindsight, there's so much to be grateful in in Rick's passing. I'm thankful to have known such a strong man of God. I'm thankful to have had the opportunity to work with him and to learn from him. I'm thankful to have had a friend like Rick Hohn. I'm thankful for the people that he introduced me to. I'm thankful for the memories of his song and dance when we had music in the meeting Rick's song was, it was the joyful noise. It was beautiful. And he would start spinning in his wheelchair. And he would just have a great time with it. I'm thankful for that memory. I'm thankful for the imagination that what, it, what his song is like today and his dance. I'm thankful for the times that he told me that he loved me. Thankful for knowing that one day I'll see him again. Thankful for the times he prayed for me. Thankful that he has a website that I can go to and continue to learn from him and look at him. I'm thankful for his message of forgiveness that he passed to us from Jesus. He would bring it to us at least once a year and teach us that um, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. You see, when we practice being grateful, when we cultivate the discipline, there's so much to be grateful for. It, It takes the sadness right out of it. And I could go on and on, but there's some things we should be mindful about. Um, The adversities and that, we're, that we one of them is that we all have to go through adversities nobody's exempt all of us will at some time be subject to hard times some more than others two is that we get through these easier with the help of others I can't imagine going through some of the things that I've been through in my life without the help of others without the help of family, without the support groups, the friends, without God. And we've been created to be relational. The Bible talks about relationships from Genesis through to Revelations, and I am thankful for relationships. Third, we've been created to be able to endure extreme hardships by the spirit that God has instilled in us. 
I'm grateful for how wonderfully God created me. Life is full of circumstances that don't seem to make any sense. We see injustice constantly. Way too often, the bad guys win. We have a powerful God that can turn the bad into good. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 18 reads, Even though the fig trees have no blossoms, and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails, the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields, and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. You see, Habakkuk was more than thankful during hard times. He was joyful. He rejoiced. And the reason he could rejoice is because his focus wasn't on the hardship. It was on the joy of his salvation. Could there be anything more to be thankful for than spending eternity with God? It's hard to wrap your mind around it. It's hard to practice it, but it's possible. There were those in the Bible who had problems with gratitude. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans about some folks who were pretty messed up. They had problems with gratitude. Romans 1, 21 says, Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Verse 24 says, So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. Verse 25 says, They traded the truth about God for a lie. Verse 26 says, God abandoned them. Then verse 28, since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. The messed up people that Paul was writing about had some real problems with their thinking and it affected their lives severely. Two words that we should be acutely aware of in these verses is thinking and abandon. Some of the worst decisions that I've ever made in my life started out with a bad thought, with wrong thinking. Every action that we begin, every action that we take, begins with a thought. Paul tells us in Philippians 3.13 something that he did that kept him moving forward. He says, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and focus on what lies ahead. Every time I see that verse, something gets to me about it is that isn't forgetting the past and focusing on the what lies ahead, two things? I don't understand it all, but I'm okay with it. I think it's good advice. It says our thoughts, the way we think, can and do block us from gratitude. Keeping our focus on eternity with God would be a most excellent way to work on our wrong thinking. Being blocked from gratitude blocks us from contentment, It blocks us from happiness. The Bible says in Romans 12, 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I'm happy to report that I'm still learning here, and I believe that there are new and fresh neural pathways being created in me. If I find my thinking doesn't line up with God's word, 
I need to change the way I think. That other word, abandoned, frightens me. Nothing good can ever come from being abandoned by God. God will never take away our freedom to choose. I could choose to start thinking foolish thoughts any time, and I know that they would lead to foolish actions. I've seen it happen in the recovery ministry over and over, and it isn't pretty when someone chooses the foolish thinking instead of godly thinking. Some of the points that were made in, in the uh, previous sermons that really were impressed, impressed me, they made a big impact on me. It's more than a mere word or emotion. Gratitude is, thankfulness is more than just a word or an emotion. Gratitude isn't something that we just stumble onto one day. It's a spiritual discipline. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of gratitude that takes intentional effort. It's developed by deliberate action. We cultivate gratitude. If we want to be grateful, we have to choose it. When we humbly recognize the reality of who God is, of who we are, and of who our neighbor is, it can bring a sweet melody of gratitude into our, the core of our being. But there is work that needs to be done. Early on in my walk with God, there would be days that I would find myself grumpy, short with people, focusing on things to complain about. My sponsor would notice how I was acting, that I was out of sorts, and he would suggest that I write a gratitude list. So I'd do that. Simply unpacking the reality of who God is, who I am, and who my neighbor is, can have a a powerful impact on my attitude. And then when I add the dynamic of writing to that equation, it has a shelf life that doubles the gratitude. Writing deliberately about simple things that we have a tendency to take for granted. Things that get forgotten far too quickly. Things like gestures of kindness from a stranger. Um, A smile. A child laughing. Sounds of children playing. Warmth of the sun on a chilly morning. Friendships we have developed. A country road. A beautiful tree. Music. Viewing a sunset on a cloudy fall day. Wonderful memories of a loved one who's passed on. A good book, the Bible, the talents of our worship team. That includes those guys that are in the back up there, the audio and visual. A great tasting meal shared with someone that you love. Answered prayers, long talks with friends. There's so much to be grateful for. Henri Nguyen wrote this in his book, Return of the Prodigal Son. The choice for gratitude rarely comes without some real effort. But each time I make it, the next choice is a little easier, a little freer, and a little less self-conscious. Because every gift I acknowledge reveals another and another until finally even the most normal, obvious, and seemingly mundane event or encounter proves to be filled with grace. Writing about simple things that we are grateful for helps us to change our perspective, helps us to change the way we think, and helps us to recognize what's real in our lives. We start to realize that our lives are, in reality, filled with grace. Amen? Since I was asked to write about gratitude, I began to study it, and I was intrigued by a suggestion 
of a gratitude journal. So I started to journal about gratitude. In a short time, my eyes have been open to benefits of reflecting on gratitude. One of the benefits that I found that go hand in hand with gratitude is generosity. Studies have shown that our brains create a gratitude generosity loop. We're thankful for the generosity shown to us and that thankfulness inspires our own compassion and generosity. We begin to see that things, the things that we are grateful for are, in fact, gifts from God. James 1.17 says, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father. We have been given so many good and perfect gifts. Well, we've examined a few different aspects of gratitude. We've looked at gratitude in hard times, gratitude for small everyday things. We've looked at what can happen when we're ungrateful. We've looked at things that block us from gratitude. We've looked at some ways to practice gratitude, and we've looked at some benefits that come with gratitude. So one last word from Jesus coming from Matthew 10, 8. It says, give as freely as you have received. When I think about all that I have received from Jesus, I wonder how I will ever be able to give as freely as I have received. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for all the good and perfect gifts that you have blessed us with. Help us to be people who are thankful in every circumstance, for everything, all the time. Remind us to forget the past and focus on the eternal things that lie ahead with you. Give us hearts that overflow with generous gratitude so that we might give as freely as we have been given. We thank you for everything that you have given us, everything you've taken away, everything we have left. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's stand.